Well, what's up, everybody? My name is Cody Kent. I am a offensive coordinator at Lafayette County High School in South Arkansas. We are a 2A school. Um, average about 35, 40 kids per grade. We're really small. It's the smallest classification in Arkansas. And uh, today I'm going to talk about attacking the odd front with a run scheme we call Fold. Here's my information, guys. If y'all need to contact me on Twitter, email, here's my cell phone number. I don't care if you have, a, have questions, just holler at me, guys. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. So why Fold, right? It's a great play for small athletic linemen. We struggled this year with O-linemen because of numbers. COVID kind of affected us severely. We had a couple kids not play this year just due to personal reasons. So we kind of had to use – we used our backup wide receiver as our left tackle, and then we used two other skilled players at O-line at times. So um, it's really good for guys who can who are athletics. So if you got guys that are real good up front, like some dudes, this is even better. It gave us really great blocking angles. That's what I really loved about it. It was really easy to teach. Our guys never got confused, and they always executed. That's what I loved about this play. It was really inexpensive for us. And then all of our runners, it was a really simple read. It was we're we're block. Uh, we're going to aim at the brown spot of the center, and we're going to cut opposite of them. And it made it really simple for our guys. And we run it out of empty one back and two back formations. You can uh, – you can run it out of too tight, but we, we chose not to because it didn't fit our personnel. And um, it's our go-to run for our odd front. So anytime we got an odd front, this is a play we try to utilize. And, you know, when you got guys like Brucey like this, like we did, man, you just got to work with what you got. Um, our philosophy with this was we wanted a simple scheme because our guys, you know, they play both ways. They play offense, defense, special teams. I mean, we had guys playing 165 snaps a game. So we didn't want them to have to remember a bunch of stuff. We wanted to keep it really, really simple for us. And um, what we saw a lot this year was those three, four teams and those backers walked up. So it almost looked like bear at times. So we needed an answer for those really, really tight four eyes and our 160 pound tackle couldn't down block. We couldn't wash him down, and we couldn't ask that right tackle to down block those four eyes because they were really penetrating hard. Um, it hits fast. That's what we really liked about it. Um, this play hits really, really quick. It, it's not a very long pull for our tackles, and this play just – a lot of teams wouldn't even know where the ball was at at times because it would just hit so quick. And uh, what I have to stress to you guys and you coaches is – you cannot run this against an even front. It is specifically for an odd front only. we got to understand that. How we communicated it. Communication. The end's not in here. Okay. We're 100% nonverbal on how we, on how we communicate from sideline to the field. Right? We always use hand signals. Now, at times, I would scream, hey, get lined up, or hey, you're widening your alignment, whatever the case may be, but we never screened out plays. We never use wristbands. We use signals. That way we can play as fast as we could, right? Um, we always signal the formation first. That way we can get the kids lined up and they can get, and they can get ready for the second signal. And we, anytime we use the motion, that will be the second signal. If we didn't motion, we didn't even send a signal for it. And then our protection or the run scheme was third. That way, for so for any play that we ran fold, if it was out of three by one, two by two, or two by one, as in a two back set, it was two signals. So it was really, really effective for our guys, and it wasn't a lot for them to understand and remember. So if we wanted to go ace fold, which for us is two by two, fold is what we call the play. It was just boom, ace, and we just called it turkey because that's what our kids like. We got a bunch of country kids around here, and they deer hunt, duck hunt, hunt squirrels, and, you know, they're just country boys, so they wanted to call it turkey, and uh, all we did was that. So we would go ace turkey, and then they knew how to line up and run it. If we wanted to go – if we wanted to put some window dressing on it and make it look different to the defense, say we wanted to go three by one and motion the Y and get some backers moving or get an empty, we would go early, Y, move, turkey, boom, just like that. I mean, it was not hard, guys. And we use and we used a lot of motion with this play because we ran it. We had a lot of success out of empty. Um, very very simple communication, guys. We did not make it hard. A lot of coaches want to make things hard when the foot when football simple. Guys, don't make it harder than what it is. 
what gave us issues, Coach? This is anytime I talk to a coach about something I'm learning about, I always want to know what gave you issues. What what made it difficult to run this play? Because coaches will tell you, hey, this is what we do, and we're going to do it till the cows come home. Okay, what if the cow came home in an hour? You know what I mean? Like, okay, so we had to have we had to know what what would what would bite us if if it wasn't executing right. So the biggest issue was our center getting blown up by a nose. Right, because we are asking that center to do, a, to do a solo block. He's not getting a double team on the nose. So anytime the center got, ha, allowed big time penetration, it would make it hard for that back to get the ball or to get him to, for him to make a good read and get make a cut or whatever the case may be. Or our tackles not getting on the backers quick enough. So if they were slow on their pull, that that would cause us issues because then we'd get run throughs by the backers and then then the play wasn't successful. What the biggest issue we found with this play was if you had inside linebackers blitzing or walked up, it was really hard for those tackles to get to them. That's what I found out was the hardest thing about this play because we would get a mic and the other inside linebacker and they would walk up and B gap and or A or they'd be real tight in A right off that nose and it was really tough for our tackles to fold underneath and get to them guys. There's a really good clip in here of our left tackle knocking one off where he blitzed and it kind of hit nice. So uh, if you're if you got a dude who's smart and understands that he's got to go get his inside linebacker, although although he's walked up, that's a good thing. So um, that was the most important. And then any delay on the mesh point with the back, if the quarterback fumbles the snap or he doesn't get a good handoff with the back, that caused problems. And at times it did give us some issues because we would get a high snap or a low snap because the center was maybe wasn't focusing or whatever the case may be. Um, that causes issues too. But the key point, guys, if those black, if those inside backers are coming up and they're blitzing, you got to be aware that's going to be tough. Now, if they're just sitting back there and reading and reacting, this is a great play. This is how we run it out of the empty. So what we're doing is we're asking this center to one-on-one -on -one with this tackle or the nose. That's all we're doing, guys. This center has got a one-on-one -on -one block, and he knows he has no help. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And what we tell our center is, hey, you're pushing him where he wants to go. That's it. We're, now, of course, we'd love a pancake right there or push him downfield, but we know that's not always the case in high school football. We had a sophomore center this year, real smart kid, did a real good job for us. Now, our guards – their coaching point, hey, you're basing out the ends. Whether they're four eyes, they're fours, or they're fives, you're basing them out. Now, if these ends want to be fives, that's great. They're not even in the play almost because what these it makes it an easy block for these guards. And sometimes these four eyes, I got some great clips of these four eyes getting cut. And in Arkansas, we can cut as long as it's on the first initial movement in the box. So if you got four eyes that are slanting real hard or they're getting real big time penetration, cut them suckers. It's a legal play cut them and then what we're asking our tackles to do is they're going to square pull and they're going to get downfield immediately for the inside backer now i get a lot of questions well coach we don't get these three two boxes or we don't get these uh these real light five-man boxes well we throw the ball 40 45 times a game so we get these boxes all the time so what, what we had to figure out what was a good run for us against a five-man box that that we didn't have to practice and practice and practice over again and really had to stress a lot of rules and techniques so that what we did was we found that this was really good for our kids so it became really effective for us that's out of two by two here's out of here's out of two back so at times we get played one team this year where they were a three three stack and uh, they really kept the integrity of their stack that never came out of it. Even when we got an empty, they never came out of their integrity of the stack. They would go one high on us at times, but their 3-3 three, three stack always stayed true. They never came out of it. So what that did for us, we had to find a way to get another hat on that six man. So what we would do, this is green for us. This is just two back. We would have to communicate with our H and our, and our tackle, and they would have to communicate, okay, who's getting the outside linebacker and who's getting the mic? And if once they were on the same page, we let them figure that out on the field. When we called this and we said, hey, guys, we got to be on the same page on this blocking scheme because we don't want two guys going for one backer. Then we get a run through. So say this tackle and this H went and led on that outside linebacker in this situation. Say both these guys did that. 
that cause issues because then we're getting run through with the mic. So we did a really good job of communicating this. We didn't, we only saw a, a three, three stack team one time this year. So we didn't really have, we didn't have too many issues with this. Here's exactly our rules. Center is going to push the nose or the shade where he wants to go. Cannot allow penetration. That's what, we, that's what you really got to work with the center. Cause we all know he's got a lot of things. He's got an ID protection. He's got an ID block and assignments. And then he's got to snap the ball and then he's got a guy in his face. And usually if you're playing teams with a nose, they're usually some more daddies, you know, they're guys who can play. Um, and then our guards, they're basing out first man past the center. We made that rule really easy for our guys. Cause the guards are like, well, coach, there's a walked up guy. Well, that's the linebacker. What we're going to do is we're going to base out the first man with his hand on the ground past the center. And, uh, and you can cut, if it's in the first movement from his stance. So if we told our guys, if you feel like you can cut him, cut him. But we're, we didn't ask him to cut him. We just wanted the base block it out. And then our tackles are square pulling for front side backer. Now, when we teach this square pull, we want to keep their shoulders downfield. We want to keep them shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. That way they're not pulling like they're kicking, like maybe on GT or long trap or any kind of scheme where your guards are pulling flat and they're trying to get a kick out on the end man. This is a square pull for our uh, for our tackles and they want to stay downhill. Our runner, which is our Q and our F, we told them the aiming spot is the brown spot of the center. We made it as easy as it can be, the brown spot of the center. And then we told them get vertical. This is not a play where it bounces. This isn't like inside zone where you got a bang bounce or whatever, whatever, what's the, I can't remember the other rule, whatever these inside zone guys are teaching. Um, bang, bend, and bounce. That's what it was. But we want to get vertical. There's no cutback. There's, there's no bounce in it. We're trying to get vertical. And you'll see it. For I think the first clip I got, my quarterback shoots out like a cannon for 20 yards. I mean, this, this play hits fast. That's what I loved about it. It just hit so dadgum fast that sometimes linebackers wouldn't even know who had the ball, and it was the quarterback, the guy who got the ball off the snap. I mean, it was crazy. And let's get to the film, guys, because I think that's what everybody wants to know. Is the, it, it, that's what that's how I learn the best. That's how I see the best. So we see here, we got it looks like a five. We got a nose here, and it looks like a five right there, or maybe a four. Um, and then we got two backers. Okay, this is a team I played. This is a non-conference team we played, and they gave us a an odd front at first. And what we did, what we got a lot of the times, coaches, is what we would get an odd front first and we would kill them with this run, and then boom, they'd give us an even front. That was their adjustment, because teams have got to adjust if they're going to give us a five-man box. Because if you're a spread team and a, and a team who throws the ball like we do, we're going to come out and we're going to throw the ball 40, 45 times a game. Teams are going to walk those guys out. They're going to give you too high, and they're going to have two overhangs. They're going to have two corners, and they're dropping guys. They're, they are got to defend the pass. So what they do is they give us numbers in the box. We kind of had a poor man Tebow at quarterback this year, a guy who can run, was real physical, sophomore, young kid. We ran him a bunch, and uh, it just really helped us out. So what here is we're going to base out these, in, uh, these ends. We're going one-on-one -on -one with the nose. Tackles are folding. Boom. And it, it hits fast, fellas. I'll let it play through. Hopefully it's not too uh, choppy. Boom. Tackles are folding. Quarterback does a little fake. We didn't teach him that. He just kind of does what he wants to at times. So we'll go slow here. Tackles are folding real nice. Boom. Go get on the linebacker. Right tackle didn't even block anybody. And we still got 20 yards. So that was four on four on four right there. Here it is again. Same drive, actually. So this is kind of a better view. They're still giving us this five-man box. We're in empty here. You can tell we got them guys spread out. So quarterback doesn't do a good job of getting vertical, right? He misses the hole. He bounces it out here where these guys can go make a play, and he only gets four, right? So he got 20 yards on the first play earlier in this drive, but this time he doesn't want to get vertical. We got to understand their kids, and they make mistakes. But this guy made the wrong read on a run, and he still got four yards. So go back to what I was saying earlier, guys. What gives us issues? Mic back, a mic that's walked up. Here's a mic walked up. So this is a really hard block for our tackle to fold in and get them. Really tough block here. But watch our left tackle. This is our backup wide receiver who we move to left tackle. 
He's a senior, and we kind of gave him some gadget plays this year to kind of reward him for, for, you know, being such an unselfish player. But watch this block by this right tackle. He goes and knocks his guy out because he knows that's who he's got to get. Boom. Right? And gave him just a crease. Quarterback didn't even hit the hole. But here's a perfect example of this Mike flying in there, and he doesn't even see this tackle folding getting him. It, it's almost like trap, essentially. We'll watch it one more time. Boom. Flat pull. Boom. All he needed to do was get a clip on him. The quarterback still wants to bounce it. Right? So here's an issue here. So here's a team that was real physical. They were a real good team. Um, I think they went to the second round of the playoffs this year. This is a good team. So same deal. We're going to base, base, block the nose where he wants to go. Tackle should fold here. Tackle should fold on this guy. Guys, if y'all look and pay attention, we have our backup quarterback playing right guard. He's 6'1", 145 pounds, soaking wet. I mean, we had some injury issues, and then we had uh, some COVID issues, and then we had a right guard who quit on us this year. So we just had to adapt and overcome. So backup quarterback was a dude. He, he was tough. He's like, Coach, I'll play it. I'll do whatever the team needs us to do. But here's an issue. He didn't, he didn't base out this guy, and we had problems here. All right? Center getting blown up. Center getting allowing penetration here. You got to understand, this is a sophomore here, and this is a really senior heavy team. Boom. Center allowed big time penetration, made it a tough block, made it a tough read on the running back, right? So there's an issue there. Okay, here's another one where we, we were, we're getting a mic walked up. So it's going to be a tough block here, right? Couldn't get a hand on him, right? He kind of slants. Good read by the running back, but since he's walked up, this is a hard block to get, and he slants inside and makes a tackle. That's what can give you issues, guys. If they got mics that are like walking up blitzing, it's really tough to get this off because this tackle can't get there. Just not enough space to go make a play. Okay, same team. Here we, are, here we are, and it looks like this is Tripp's bunch to the left. So this would be Tripp's left for us. And all we did was we orbited the back. Boom. Just that motion right there is walking this backer out, out the gate. So I'll get coaches asking me, guys, what, coach, what about this outside backer walking up? That looks like that's an even front. He's so wide out here. If he, I would consider him a seven in this situation. Um, he, he can't make this play. He's what, – what are high school kids taught at defensive end? Run upfield. Go, go sack the quarterback, okay? So we're going to treat him like that. If he's going to run upfield, he's going to run himself out of the play because this ball is going to hit so fast and so tight right up the middle, and we teach get vertical that he's just going to run himself out of the play. And if you watch him, he's going to run himself right out of the play. We get a backer out the box. So now this is really five on four. See, he runs himself right out the play. Not a bad run for us. 12-yard game. Right? This team gave us an odd front all night long, and we took advantage of it. Boom. Good, good fold by the tackles. Five-yard game. When I call a run, five yards is more than enough. I'm trying to get four yards when I call a run. We're a heavy air raid team, and we throw it. So what we had to do was we had to keep them honest sometimes. Kalen is our quarterback here. He likes to give that ball fake. And sometimes I thought it slowed it down a little bit. I said, man, just get just get vertical as fast as you can. Here's another good clip. Only gets us three, but uh window dressing here, guys. We're in empty and we just orbit motion our our uh, H receiver here. And then boom. Out the gate. Couldn't get a good base block. So here, here's another deal. Here's a senior. Here's a senior kid right here. He tore his ACL last year, week six at homecoming. So he's not even a full year removed from an ACL injury. And we, and we told him this year, hey, man, we may not ask you to play a bunch, but if you can give us 15, 20 snaps just in case, that's all I'm asking from you. And I know he's really limited athletic-wise because of his knee injury. He's still rehabbing, but he, he was a good kid, and he just wanted to play when he could help. He was our long snapper, and uh, he didn't get a lot of practice in. So uh, – he did the best that he could. Not a bad, not bad base block, but that's that DN was a big fella. Um, 
here it is again. We're, we're in just early here. Trip's right. We're just going to push motion our back, guys. This does not take a lot of coaching, guys. Push motion this guy. Get a backer out the box, guys. Just That's all we're wanting to do here. He's not even involved in the run. Let's see if we can get a box. Let's see if we can get a backer out the box. Boom. Now it's five on four, right? This tackle should go lead up on the daggum referee here. I mean, there's no one to block here, right? See? It, I ride tackle. Don't even know who to get. That's when you got – that's when you – and, guys, this is just an easy push motion tag. And, guys, I would just I would just say, hey, put F, push, F, push. Get to the sideline. Run fast. Make this guy chase you, right? And then we had some RPOs. We would build off of it, but we weren't a huge RPO team, right? So, boom, we get this guy out the box. Boom, out the gate. Got a safety real deep, 13 yards. Guys, and we're not blowing guys up here. I mean, we aren't blowing dudes off the ball. I mean, we're not. You see us. We got got a guy with a a bad, a bad knee. I mean, we got our backup receiver in here at left tackle. I mean, guys, we're working with what we got here. It's not like we're huge, man. So, I mean, we're just trying to use angles and just trying to be smart here. That's all we're doing. We're going to orbit this guy again. Look, let's get that back around the box a little bit, right? That's all it took. Give him a little bit of crease. Here's a clip of us in uh, here's a clip of us in blue. So we're in blue here. We got a stack receiver alignment. We're trying to get real wide to bring out to try to widen this backer as much as we can. This was a cover one team. They started to walk this safety down. We hit them deep a couple times, try to back them up. But what we're gonna do is this guy is gonna lead up, block him while this tackle. Should either go get this guy or go get to safety, right? So now this becomes a six-man scheme instead of a five-man scheme because it's a six-man box. Boom. And, guys, when I mean when we had injuries and we had to do some things that was unconventional, our right tackle here was a, our starting corner. You can tell this guy has no clue what he's doing. We just had to put him in there because we had some injuries. A bat, our starting corner, who's 5'9", 5'10", 145 pounds, if that, 150 with it raining. I mean, he just got – we just told him, hey, get in there and just do the best that you can. And there's six yards with a corner playing right tackle, guys, a corner. We had a real physical guy, F. He made up there – went up there and made a good lead block. And this that was a good team. Here's some real good clean cut-ups of another team that runs the same scheme in our state. So. You're going to see this. So we got real tight four out. We got a tight four out right here. And, and, and when I say this defense is, is really athletic and really good, they're really good. Boom. Base that guy out. And, guys, we, look at this. This right guard gets blown up. Blown up. Boom. But that ends caring more about knocking that guard out instead of making a play. And then, boom, this guy's getting 15 yards down the field. You know, that's what these guys do. You're just guys, you're just getting in the way here. That's all you're doing is getting in the way. And when I say this play is easy to teach, easy. You saw our little guys blocking these dudes. And here's a team that's executing at a higher level than us, I feel like, because their O-line is legit. And I'm talking about out the gate. Same play, guys, same play. Now you got a little tighter of an alignment here, it looks like. It looks like it's a four-eye. You got to look like a shade or nose. And when I say these DNs are, are legit, dude, they're legit. They're a dominant 3A team in our state. I mean, they they make a deep run in the playoffs every year, a deep run. And this is the defending state, 3A state champions. So, um, real good team here. Here we go. Looks like you got a five here. Look like you got a four eye. Look like you got a shade or maybe a nose. So, this becomes a real easy block for this guard, real easy block, because he's almost out of the way. Because this ball hits so fast, so tight that, I mean, this guy can't make a play. It's impossible unless this guy is a freak. I mean, he's not making that play. He's just not. Good fold right there. Good fold on this guy. I mean, guys, this is so simple, man. I cannot stress how simple this was. This was our kids' favorite run. Super simple. It was not hard, man. Center had a stalemate. Boom, that's all you can ask for right there. Looked like got about four. 
Same game, guys. We got a bunch of clips of this team. Same deal here. Looks like to be a I, – I would call this a 3-2 box. This guy's kind of walked out a little bit. I don't consider him in the box. Now, he kind of is, but in this situation, this ball's going to hit so tight. If anything, he's got to come in and we'll see what it looks like here. Right? He runs upfield. Runs right by him. You see what I'm talking about, guys? I think some coaches would consider this guy in the box, but not me, because this ball hits so tight, so fast. These linebackers are not used to coming in and making tackles there and there. They're not used to it. They're used to coming downhill and fitting and fitting gaps. They're not used to coming inside and making a play, right? We tell our guys, hit this tight and make them arm tackle you and be tough and run through it. That's what we teach our guys, right? Runs right upfield. Right, boom, out the gate. And guys, I mean, dude, we're not, they're not making huge big time blocks. They're just stalemating these dudes. I mean, you don't have to get pancakes on this play. And when I say this is a, this is a hoss right here, I mean, dude, this is a hoss, right? Not asking them to do much, man. You see, see what I'm telling you? He finally got through one time. I think the mesh took a little too long, right? Look like he was trying to look like some type of RPO look here. He's looking downfield first, All right? But that's what I say. When I say this play hits fast, I really like this play out of empty better. I told our coach, I said, I don't even want to hand it to the running back. It takes too long. It just took too long. I would rather quarterback just keep it, just catch it, and then boom, go. Now, I understand some guys don't have runners at quarterback, and I understand, but have that running back tight or maybe have a wildcat situation and just have that sucker run right up the middle. I mean, guys, this is easy. This is stealing, dude. I mean, this is easy. You're not making big-time blocks here. I mean, you get a nice fold here. I don't know who he's folding for. There's not even a linebacker in the box. I mean, this guy's going to go get this guy who looks like he's five yards downfield. It looks like a safety, you know? There's nobody to get. They almost double-team that guy. I mean, if teams want to walk, I mean, this, I understand guys who are run first, you know, they got, they're getting six, seven man boxes, but we're not that. And if it doesn't apply to you, I'm sorry, but coaches who, who you do get these five man boxes because you want to establish the pass first, because we're a team where we're going to pass to set up the run. We firmly believe in that. We're going to pass to set up the run. Boom. You know, you got these guys coming downhill. Boom. Good cut, running back. Tough. I mean, guys, he got, what, six, seven yards. I mean, and guys, this is easy. I'm telling you. I love this play. When I cannot stress y'all. I will carry this play everywhere I go because it is that good. It is that good, guys. Get a nice fold by the tackles there. They kind of get – they kind of pinch it in, make it – Make it bounce here. So this is a good – so look, I think they, I think this kid knows, hey, they keep prick, they keep freaking hitting this thing inside. I'm going to slant in. And they finally spilled it here, right? But it still got positive yards. Still. Simple, guys. And we gave our center, we gave our center the ability to check to this this year. If our center got an odd front look, he would check the turkey. He would. And you would hear it on the sideline. You would hear it, turkey, 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 and you knew it was coming. Our running back knew it was coming, or our quarterback would – what I told our quarterback, hey, if you ever got a turkey call, you, you push that back or you orbit him to try to get a backer out the box, and you just keep it yourself. Because we had a lot more success with it with our quarterback just because he was such a good runner. He's a really dynamic guy. I mean, he's 5'9", 160 maybe, 4'7". I mean, he's not super fast, but he had some speed. He was tough. You know, he, he, he liked running the ball. He wanted to run dudes over, you know. So, if you got a guy back there that'll run, I mean, this was easy, guys. Bang it right up the middle. Touchdown. Hopefully it's not too choppy. You know, look, that outside linebacker's trying to come in, but he can't get there in time, man. He just can't. You know, you got this guy walking up right here. 
Got this guy walking up, trying to come in here and get it. He's just too far away, guys. It's just the angles. When I say the angles work, you got this tackle folding, and you got this guy getting based out. I mean, this guy's got to make a big, long loop, and he just cannot get there in time because it hits so fast. All right? He almost gets there, but if you don't hand that thing to the running back, I mean, he, he's, he's not even getting touched there if the quarterback kept it. Boom. Oh. Beautiful. There's my information, guys. I know it's probably real quick. Guys, if y'all got questions, y'all can holler at me. I'm on my phone all the time, just like everybody else. Um, y'all can hit me up on Twitter, follow me. Y'all can email me. If y'all want this presentation, I'll send y'all this presentation. I'll send y'all all the huddle cutups if y'all want. Um, you can text me. I'll, I'll, I'll help you whatever, whatever you need, guys. Uh, I don't mind helping. Uh, the only way I learned was by asking other coaches. And I had a guy who – who mentors me and he kind of taught me this play and we kind of taught it our kids to, we taught it to our kids and made it our own. And we gave the kids, uh, we let them call it what they wanted. You know, we got the country fella. So they called it Turkey and they loved it. They came up with the signal. I mean, got coaches, don't make it hard. Ask the, co ask the kids what they want to call it, ask them how they want to signal it and then uh, have them take ownership. And that's what they really liked about it. They loved it. It became their favorite run. We ran GT this year. We ran jet sweep, fold, and long track. And that was our run game. And when I say we ran this play against every odd front, we're running it out of an odd front. And, we, and we're running it. We're not running GT. We're not running long trap. We're running fold against an odd front. And then when teams went even on us, that's when we started running our GT and we started running our long trap. And uh, that was our answer. You got to have those if then. So what we what we liked was if we got a non front, this play was we were good at it. We we practiced it, we executed at a high level, and we uh we believed in it and it worked well for us. I hope to build on it in in the future years and hopefully it's good to us in the future. And and wherever I go next, hopefully we execute it just like our team did this year. 